Hello, Chief Skaters. Welcome. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Chief Skates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up, and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. We are really glad to have you. And if it's not, welcome back. Well, how have you all been this week? It's been a bit of a topsy turvy week, um, weather wise price-wise for just about everything. So much has been going on in my own little world. I've been, I've been up, I've been down, I've been fluttering in the middle. Yeah, it's been, it feels like, feels like such a long time since last Tuesday and it's not, it's only a week. Just goes to show so much can happen in one week. One of the major things that happened is I've lost my notes. Now I do the notes for the show. I do them, usually start them on a Wednesday after I've double checked the newsletter and made sure that's ready to go out. Then I'll start working on the notes for the next week's show and thinking about how it's going to work and what I've got to say because you know I just have a lot to say and getting them all together and I keep them in one place. In one place on my pooter there is a file and it's a YouTube, that's all it's called, YouTube, and everything goes into that file. And I use OneNote always because I love it and I love it mostly because it saves automatically. I don't have to remember to save it. And I know I can set up auto save in Word, but auto save in Word is a bit more complicated than just saving it in OneNote. Anyway, I had them all there and I was playing with them this morning and changing things around and swapping things out and doing what I do. And I went back to get them just before dinner to double check again or triple check or quadruple check. And I can't find them. They're not in the YouTube file. I've tried searching. I've tried everything. I don't know what I've done. They weren't in the bin, so I, I don't know. And I bet as soon as we finish tonight, I will click something and those notes will pop up. But anyway, I pretty much know what I want to talk about. Last week we talked about you know, the things that we should have in our pantry, the things that we need, when to get them, how much to get them, how to get them, whatever. This week, and that was mostly food, food things. So this week I want to talk about those other things, those non-food things that we need, that we use, that we love. So, hmm. My mind is racing ahead as I'm speaking to you, trying to remember what I had written down. Anyway, while I'm thinking, I know there were a lot of people already here. We've had heaps of comments. What are we up to? Sorry, just let me see. 18 comments. I'm going to have to do something about these lights. The glare is terrible. Is it annoying you guys? It's annoying me. So we've got give me some truth. It was early. I'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. So happy to have you, Yvonne J, Beverly, Catherine, Kerry, Delaney. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we're all feeling a bit of that um, daylight saving lag. But it's really, a, a, I find it quite funny though, because like daylight saving is an hour. You know, every six months we either gain an hour or lose an hour. And the people that carry on about it, the people that really carry on about it and make the drama of it, amuse me because if they were to go out for an evening and not get to bed for an hour later, they wouldn't carry on. They'd adjust. So, you know, it's really quite bizarre, the people that carry on about daylight saving. I love it. Can you tell? I really miss it. I'm, I hate early dark. Um, anyway, we're glad you're here, Delaney. Jenny, 
Julie, um, Gail, Lydia, Bobster, Michelle Smith, Jody. I think I said Jody. Jane, has got her Tim Tams and a cup of tea. I've got my cup of tea. <laughs> I haven't got Tim Tam though. Um, Suzanne, Veronica, Trish. Okay, Mrs. Dilligav, Pam, Outback Six. I'll come back and um, Annette. All oh, right, Wendy's here. Hello. Okay, so other things, what other things do we need in our pantries? Now, we talked about food, you know, so we've got plenty of food. But do you have enough of the other things that you need and use? And they're often the things that you might not realise you need them or use them until you do need them or you do go to use them. They're the, and we've done, we've talked about this before, the, the little hmm, common but not so common things. So do you, for your circumstance, do you know what they are? Um, do you know how um, how much of each thing you need to keep in your pantry? Because remember, when I talk about pantry, I don't just mean the food covered in the kitchen. Your pantry is everything. When we talk about pantries, we cover everything. So we cover food, but we also cover the cleaning, the toiletries, the medicines, the um, um, uh, home maintenance things, the garden things, these are all a part of your pantry. Your pantry isn't just that one little food cupboard in the kitchen. Do you know if you can't get those things that you need, do you know what substitutes you can use? Are there substitutes for them? Do you know those things? These are all questions that I ask myself. Oh, I ask myself these things all the time because I am constantly going over what we have, what we don't have, what we need, what we use, what is a necessity as opposed to what makes our life more comfortable but isn't really a necessity, those sorts of things. So just before... <laughs> While I was panicking about not having notes, just before um, I sat down, I did a quick whiz around the house and just picked up some things that are part of our pantry, but eh, not necessarily the um, things that we think of all the time. So things like... Um, safety pins. Now let me see if I'm holding this up so you can see it. Safety pins. Whoops, got a bit of a glare there. Gold and silver. Um, you don't know you need a safety pin until you need it. Now I have some in a jar that sits in the sewing box, so I can go and get them. We always seem to have safety pins, but I picked up this packet as a spare. I think it came from I think it came from cheapest chips when I was visiting Hannah it wasn't very expensive a dollar dollar 25 or something like that very very inexpensive safety pins are really handy because they keep the baby's nappy on they will hold a piece of elastic together they will hold a hem up they will um keep dunas from falling down into the duna cover when our kids were little i used to always um pin their dunas to the um bottom hem of their duna covers just so it didn't get lost i could shake it then it would all fall down but it'd stay in place safety pins you don't know you need them until you do you might use them regularly or not. You might not. So if it's something that you use, even if it's just once or twice a year, do you have enough? 
do you have a jar of them or an envelope of them or a pile of them stashed somewhere that you can get to um, the other thing I grabbed too cotton there should be a packet of needles somewhere but anyway cottons cotton thread just for sewing on a button or taking up a hem or mending a split seam if it's not a really big split and you don't want to get the sewing machine out needle and thread will do the job handy to have but if you don't have it when you need it it can cause a lot of grief oh, i'm gonna have a cup of sip sip in my tea um so they all sort of go into your um sewing pantry your craft pantry if you want that sort of thing they are really you know something else to think about having a backup of now when we're talking last week and this week this is just to build a pantry to build a backup so that it will see you through a short-term emergency whatever that short-term emergency might be and it is entirely up to you to decide how long you want to be able to live from your pantry i've built ours up <clears throat> here we go glennis it started again i've built ours up to last us quite a while because we had to we had to originally live off our pantry for three years and since that time we've also lived off our pantry and just our pantry for two lots of one lot of 12 months and one lot of 15 months so it helps to have that backup for emergencies i'm not talking about end of the world zombie apocalypse nuclear war type scenarios in these shows i will do those as separate shows but this is just what we need to have in our house little things to make life more comfortable if we're suddenly unemployed if there's um suddenly um you can't get to work for some reason you are sick or you break a leg and twist a wrist or some something that will see you through okay something else and i'm speaking of break a leg and twist the wrist medicines now oh, that's terrible isn't it this is just paracetamol box and it's empty i had to rescue it out of the waste paper basket but do you have enough medicines on hand now it's really difficult if you take prescription medicines to keep ahead of them you should be able to speak to your family doctor or whoever writes the scripts for you and explain that you want to get ahead you can say you want to get ahead for financial reasons you want to get ahead just so that you don't have to go out as often you just want to get ahead and they can write those scripts so that you can get them filled and be ahead on those scripts but you will probably need to speak to your doctor about it they can do it if you are traveling they can do it so that you we often do it because we go where we go there are no pharmacies there are no chemists there are no stores to even get a packet of panadol so wayne often gets his scripts well ahead it can be done but other medicines just your ordinary things like um, an antiseptic cream a good disinfectant um, a mouthwash those sorts of things do you have enough have you worked out how much you use over the course of a week or a month or a year or whatever so that you know how much you need because once you know you can actually start planning how you're going to get them nobody i don't think we're, any of us are rich enough to be able to go out and buy a year's worth of everything right now or even a month's worth of everything right now would cost a lot of money so we need to plan it and plan it properly um one of the things that constantly pops up within cheapskates and a couple of other groups that um, I belong to is soap. Now, if you make your own soap, do you have the ingredients 
to make it? Do you have the fats? Do you have the lye? Do you have everything you need to make enough soap to last you however long it is? 12 months. Usually when I do a batch of soap, I do enough to last us 12 months. So do you have that on hand? Because those things could be hard to get. In a in an emergency situation, a crisis situation, those things could be hard to get or become very, very expensive. So, so do you have enough soap? Now, this is just, um, sorry about the crinkling. I think this, yeah, this is just Aldi soap. Very inexpensive. Very, very inexpensive. Mm, under $3 for the eight cakes. It can be used, now soap is really handy. It can be used for washing yourself. You can wash your hair with it. Not the best, but if you do a vinegar rinse, it's not so bad. Um, it can be used for shaving. So you make a lather and use it for shaving. It can be used for cleaning the dishes. It can be grated and put into the washing machine to wash your clothes. It can be turned into um, sludge and used for washing the floors or the walls. The soap is handy. Now, before we had liquid soaps and powdered soaps and shower gels and bath gels and foaming hand wash and whatever, that's what we used. Soap. Now, soap is actually quite a valuable um, commodity you have soap it's good for bartering and trade now I, I said I wasn't going to talk about you know end of the world type scenarios and I'm not but soap is valuable it can be used for so many things the people that don't have it will be happy to trade for something to get it now this is still in the packet because I only picked it up I mean, last Wednesday when I was out with Thomas, I raced into Aldi and picked it up then. Normally, I take soap out of the packet straight away. If I buy soap, it comes out of the packet straight away. And what I do is I shove it between the sheets and the towels and the tea towels and the blankets and things in the linen cupboard. And I leave it in the linen cupboard. It deters silverfish. It deters moths. And having it out hardens it. And, of course, hardens, hardened soap supposedly lasts longer now we all know that hard soap lasts longer because if you leave the soap in the soap dish and it's wet it turns to gel and it will dissolve very very quickly so hmm, i don't know that there's actually been a scientific study done into how much harder it gets when it is left out and how much longer it will last because it is hard but it just makes sense that hard soap lasts longer um wendy's saying soap was hard to get during lockdowns see and it's such a basic commodity folks soap a scrubbing brush and hot water will kill just about any bacteria any virus and it's the heat it's the combination of the heat the soap and the scrubbing will do it it's hard work but you don't need disinfectants and you don't need fancy bleaches and stuff if you have soap hot water and a good scrubbing brush if you're going to do that though you will need rubber gloves <laughs> that was a good um good segue rubber gloves are another thing that we don't think that we need them until we do now these are really handy I don't normally wear gloves because I don't like, I don't like the feel of them. But these ones were expensive, I thought, anyway. They are brilliant. They are really, really good. I've used them um, when I was scrubbing. I've used them to scrub bathroom floors. I've used them in the garden. They are really good. And if you're going to work with hot, hot water, rubber gloves really save your hands. And it just means the water can be really, really hot so that it does what it's supposed to do without you burning your hands. The other thing that was really hard to get during lockdown was the, were the disposable rubber gloves. Now, 
we go through heaps and heaps of these. Heaps and heaps and heaps of these. And I think I keep the rubber glove company in business because the boys use them for spray painting. I've started wearing them when I'm spray painting. Um, I'm using them, I'm wearing them when I'm staining stuff. I've been doing a lot of sanding the last couple of weeks and I've been wearing them. And I cheat and give myself a bit of a manicure, manicure, hand pamper treatment because I'll wash my hands, smother them in um, hand cream, put on these gloves and then put on the other ones if I'm going to be working in the yard. And so my hands come out and they're so soft and smooth. It's so nice. Um, so we go through heaps of these. Now, these disposable rubber gloves were really hard to get during the um, pandemic. Um, really, really especially if you have big hands like I do. Um, so I just wear the, we just get the ones, one size because the boys all have big hands and I just wear theirs. They were really hard. They're Coles ones, the branded ones, whatever you can get. But a few um, boxes of rubber gloves don't go astray. They are really handy for cleaning up nasty messes. They are really handy for dealing with... Um, yeah, nasty messes. We all know what nasty messes in the household are. Things like that, really, really good. But also, if you, there you go, carry double gloves when she's putting out rat baits. Smart, very smart. Um, because, oops, now what am I doing? Oh, sorry, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Um so rubber gloves are another thing that you might need in your pantry that you don't think you need or you've forgotten to put on your list. Keep a list. You should have a shopping list. Um, what else have I got? Huh. Socks. See these? Hannah bought these for me. I bet, I bet just won't lose my feet in the dark, will I? Socks. Socks and undies, they're expensive. They're already getting becoming hard to get and prices are going up. So socks and undies, T-shirts, singlets, if you have little ones, singlets, spencers, um, pyjamas, those sorts of things. I always had a couple of years ahead for the kids and when they were little, little, it was easy because you just bought sizes ahead or made sizes ahead and they would just fit into them. It was a bit harder once they hit, you know, 10, 11, 12 and those growth spurts. But I still do my best to buy ahead as much as I could for them simply by shopping, you know, the end of season sales or I will go to the market. Um, I used to be able to go to Dandenong Market before they destroyed it. And I could probably, I could outfit all three kids for under $100 for an entire year from shopping at the market. It was brilliant. Um, so think about those things. We usually, around this time of year, Easter is, is our new um I was going to say new underwear season. Yeah, that'll, that'll do. Um, it's when I go and I buy a, buy his new socks. Now, I'm only buying for Wayne and I now. The kids, of course, aren't kids anymore, so they get their own. So I get us new socks, new undies, new T-shirts, new pyjamas if we need them, and I buy enough for a year. Now, I have a particular type of sock that I really, really, really like. And it's really, really, really hard to get now because I really, really like it. I think they've taken it off. But, you know, I buy them. Now, these are um, coming three packs. So I will get three of these. So that's nine pairs of socks. That's more than enough for wintering Melbourne. So you've got a pair on, a couple of spares pair, a couple in the wash. It's plenty. I rotate through them like that. Those sorts of things. Have you thought about um, 
how you will get them if you need them and they're not available? Have you thought about how you will pay for them if you need them, they're available, but they have tripled in price? I had an interesting discussion this afternoon um, about the um, excise on the petrol and it being dropped for six months or decreased for six months. And that's all very well and good. Everyone's very happy to have cheaper unleaded petrol, but it didn't happen to diesel. Diesel's still up there. It has come down a little, but just in the normal sales um, routine, not because of anything the government did. And that concerns me because while everyone's cheering and jumping up and down saying, yay, yay, cheaper petrol, your D, the diesel that farmers use for their tractors, that truck drivers use to keep their trucks running so that they can go and pick up the grain that the, har the farmers harvested with his tractor and take it to the plant, the diesel that's used to run trains, the diesel, that hasn't come down in price. So that still means that when you hit the supermarket or the department store or the bookstore or wherever, the prices are still going to be going up because there has been no relief on transport costs for those things. So don't jump up and down and be too happy about it. You might not be paying... Um, you might not be paying as much to run your car, but seriously, guys, I would rather pay a little bit more to put petrol in the car and not drive as much and save a bundle on fresh fruit and vegetables, on canned groceries, on clothes, on bedding, on whatever. Anyway, um, Now, let me see. Sorry. Off my high horse. Sorry. It just it, it just bothers me that hmm, it's not necessarily um, it, it bothers me that people are so blind that they don't see the entire the tunnel vision and they don't see the entire picture. That really bothers me. So Anyway, off my high horse. Eucalyptus oil. Do you use eucalyptus oil? There you go. This is something else that could be affected by the price of diesel. Um, I use a lot of eucalyptus oil. It goes into Miracle Spray. I use it um, in the humidifier. I use it for all sorts of things. I will put a cap full into the final rinse of Wayne's stinky work clothes <laughs> just because I like the smell of eucalyptus. I use a lot of eucalyptus oil. So eucalyptus oil is something else. Or lavender oil or tea tree oil. What oil do you use in your home regularly that you might need more of? Along with that goes, oh, if I can lift it, vinegar. Oh, wow, this glare is terrible. Here you go, good old white vinegar. It has gone up in price. I can't hold it up, sorry guys. Um, up and up in price. It is so expensive now. I say so expensive and I sound shocked, but it's it's one of those things. Now I use a lot of vinegar too. I use it in my cleaning. I use a lot of vinegar in cooking. We use it as a weed spray. It's a really, really good thing. Um, and when you buy Basistos, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at Delaney's comment. And when you buy Basistos, it's Australian. It's Australian. Um, just to rub it in. Um, so... 
so uh, Jules, I don't want to, I'll pop you up, but I'll answer you in a minute. <laughs> Just give me a moment. So vinegar, do you use a lot of vinegar? I think most of us would do. And we talked about vinegars last week with the different kinds because there's white vinegar and there's brown vinegar and there's apple cider vinegar and there's wine vinegar, red wine, white wine vinegars, um, rice wine vinegar. There's all sorts of vinegars. But good old plain white vinegar that's really pretty, you know, it's pretty generic, is an essential. Do you have enough to do whatever you want to do to last you for however long you want your pantry to be able to last? Three one jewels. Having a time of year for buying clothes is a good idea. When do you buy summer clothes? Well, because I usually do um, the bulk of our clothes now around this time of year. So we get socks and underwear, pyjamas, um, T-shirts, um, and I start to look for um, markdowns on if we need them, shorts or jeans. I will look for them now. Otherwise, usually around October, the end of September, October, I might go looking for one or two new summer things. I don't buy a lot of clothes. You probably get sick of seeing me. I don't have a lot of clothes. No, that's not true. I have a lot of clothes. I have had a lot of clothes for a lot of years. I don't buy new clothes all the time. Um, so... I tend to try and buy the best quality I can afford and then look after it to make it last. And I'm not, you know, I like to be neat and tidy and reasonably up to date with our clothes, but I don't have to be the forefront of fashion anymore. I, you know, 30 years ago, maybe, but not anymore. Now I go for comfort and ease of care because <laughs> I'm getting old and crappy guys so that's when I that's usually when we do those things um and then sometimes if it's a special occasion something's come up I might go looking for a new dress or you know whatever Wayne desperately needs a new suit but we don't have anything coming up that he needs to wear it for for a, a while so I'm not racing out to get it and I'm kind of hoping I can very carefully um, take in the one he has at the moment but it is a good idea I did it with the kids with, twice a year with our children they would get one new set of what we called church clothes and those clothes that outfit for each of them was just for wearing for church so yes they wore the same thing to church every week People had to get over it. Um, and then they had the church clothes that were retiring became their good going out clothes. So if we were going out somewhere that they needed to be a little tidier, that was what they wore. And then they had play clothes. And the play clothes were really cheap, often things that I had made myself or I'd picked up at the op shop and, and um, redesigned, re-sewn or whatever. And they were very inexpensive and they were play clothes. And if they got dirty or they got stained or they got torn, it was no big drama. But I could always take them out and they looked reasonably clean and tidy because church clothes were church clothes, put on to go to church, came out of them as soon as we got home from church. And then the good going outs were the same, just for going out to good places. So um, what can cheap conditioner be used for? Cheap conditioner can be used for washing blankets and woolens. Um, you can water it down, dilute it, um, and use it as um, fabric softener in your washing machine. You can use it as a, if you water it down, Quite a bit. It can be used as a um, what's it, Febreze type thing. Um, shaving your legs, using it for shaving. Your husband can use it for shaving. Um, 
cheap shampoo can just be used for hand wash or for washing your clothes or washing the floor, cleaning the toilet, the bath vase or whatever. So um, yeah, I hope that I hope that helped. But well, all sorts of things now. Sorry guys. Jody says rubber bands. Yes, I don't have any here, but I do have scissors. Guys, you have no idea how handy spare scissors are. Now these ones, um, I I did pay for them through my shopping. These are the Master Chef scissors from when Coles were running that last promotion through Master Chef, and I had enough points from shopping and bonus points and whatever to get three pairs so I did because spare scissors these are actually really good scissors I'm impressed with these um, they cut through small bones they cut through wire they're pretty handy things but scissors and with that other tools like your hammers nail um, hammers screwdrivers um, a wrench a socket that sort of thing. If you don't have them, think about the things that might need to be done where you could use them. Um, excellent. And it's a perfect time of year. I know this sounds weird. It's a great time of year for making vinegar because it's still warm without being really hot and it's not really cold. So it's a really good time of year for making vinegar. Um, uh, clove oil, yes, um, that's a, uh, what's her name? I've forgotten anyway, clove oil. Clove oil is actually really good for toothache too. If you have a toothache, oil of clothes on a cotton bud, on the tooth, something to think about if you're putting into your first aid pantry is um, oil of clothes. Um, what do I do with the old socks and T-shirts? Old socks, well, we wear our socks pretty much. We wear them every day. We wear socks every day. So they do get worn out. Now, Wayne has wool socks at the moment. He has wool in winter and bamboo in summer. I darn those. I actually darn those. My socks, though, I wear them till they fall apart and then they become bed socks. So this new rotation, this new lot, will become my daytime socks. Last the ones that are about to be retired become bed socks um, or socks to wear my gumboots when I'm out in the yard or um, socks to wear when we're away camping and it's cold and I want two pairs of socks. They, because they're already stretched and the elastic's gone and whatever, they become the second pair that goes over the top of the first pair. Um, but then old socks make great dusters. If you need dusters, now T-shirts, good T-shirts are worn for good. Once they become a bit tatty and stained, they become around the house T-shirts. And once they get past being suitable for being around the house, they become garden T-shirts because then it doesn't matter if it gets torn or it gets stained or whatever. And once they're past that, they get cut up and made into um, ties for tomatoes or rags for in the shed paint rags, that sort of thing. We wear our clothes. We wear our clothes till they're unwearable pretty much. That sounds dreadful, doesn't it? Um, I don't often have clothes to take to the op shop because we wear them and we wear them till they are, you know, past mending, past being um, respectable. <laughs> So that's what we do with them. 
I don't, we don't buy a lot of clothes. We're not hard on our clothes, but we don't buy a lot of clothes. I don't think I've bought any, I don't think I've bought any new clothes since this time last year. And then I did, I did buy a jumper for winter and I think, I think it was about this time last year, a couple of pairs of new track pants and the old track pants um, became garden ones, yeah. Um, Way to go, Jane. We all need friends like that, don't we? Yes. Um, wow, three pairs of jeans for 50 cents a pair is brilliant. Oh, you will enjoy wearing those. Um, all right, sorry. Oh, we don't get rubber bands on our free paper, Jane. We just get them rolled up and shoved in the letterbox. And they've only just started coming back. Um, so then we've got, yes, batteries and duct tape. And I've lost the packet of batteries that I had because I did have a big, a big bulk pack of batteries that I bought. Yeah, where I put it. Okay. Fire lighters. I know. I know. Fire lighters, gas lighters. Um, we have a wood fire. Um, but we go away camping a lot too. And while we know how to light a fire and we don't often have to resort to the fire lighters, they come in really handy sometimes. So even for lighting a barbecue or um, a fire pit and you might want to if the power goes out you might want to cook over the fire pit you need to be able to light the fire now unfortunately fire lighting is is a skill that not many people have anymore mainly because we don't need it we've got gas we and you know most of it's automatic ignition it just lights um, we hit a button and the heater comes on so fire lighting not not as easy as it looks in the movies. Anyone that's lit, lit a fire on a regular basis will know that you've got to set it up right. And so fire lighters, very handy to have. Just a packet if you think that you might need to light a fire. Um, ooh, Maddie uses cheap shampoo in the wiper bottle on his car. Does it not streak... On the windscreen does it not leave a film on the windscreen it would have to be very diluted i would imagine but that sounds like really really good there you go delaney's got two pairs of this they are the best well for you know supposedly free scissors they're probably costing you a fortune but the points were there anyway um they're really good scissors um here you go this sounds like this sounds pamper time put a drop or two of conditioner in a small bowl of lukewarm water to soak your fingertips in for a few minutes before you give yourself a manicure that sounds very very soothing i think i might like that um Kerry says, keep the rubber bands off the veggies, the bunches of silver beet, bok choy, etc. if you buy them. And if you get flowers, often they come, flowers come with rubber bands on them. Um, I especially like the flowers that come with the purple because they're not as wide as the red rubber bands from the post office, but they're nice and strong. They are great for putting around power cords and things like that. Um, Thank you, Jane. Yes, Shannon Lush. Couldn't remember her name. Um, plain black socks. Kmart. 
Um, I love these. They're called Sport Quarter Crew. So they're, I really like them because they come up over my, in winter, they come up over my ankle, but they're not long, long. They're not so short that they fall down and they're not too long. These are brilliant socks. And the um, foot of them is cushioned. Really great socks. Really, really good socks. Um, Kmart Wendy. They're hard to get. As soon as they come in, they go out again. They come in black or white. And um, they used to come in a multi a pack of white with multicolored stripes, but I don't think they do those anymore. Um, um, T-shirts made into shopping bags on YouTube. If you go to the website, Cheapskates Club website, there's T-shirts. Um, bags made out of t-shirts and singlets for um, library bags, for grocery bags, fruit bags, all sorts of things you can do with t-shirts. Um, great idea. Jane cuts up the old t-shirts to make undies for the children. Perfect. And it will be such soft cotton. It will be so nice and soft for little bottoms. Love that idea. Maddie, where well, I've lost it. Uh, okay. Dry potato skins are good as fire lighters. I, I started to do a video on this and I haven't quite got it finished, but... Um, Really, really, really easy fire lighters if you are stuck for them. Uh, cotton balls and petroleum jelly um, that most people call Vaseline. Now, Vaseline is the brand name. So go for petroleum jelly. You can buy the off-brand one, the generic one. It's cheap enough. And you get a cotton ball. Just You don't even have to just scoop it over the top, pop it into a tin. Two of those in a fireplace with some paper and some kindling, and your they will burn for ages, and your fire goes beautifully. They are really good. Um, we often do those um, when we're camping. The other thing that's really good as a fire lighter: dry tea bags um, or coffee bags. You have those, and dip them in used cooking oil. The cooking oil that you're ready to throw out, not the what you're ready to use, and use those as fire lighters. Really, really good too. They work. We use those when we go away camping too. Um, all sorts of things you can use. Pine cones make good fire lighters. Um, so. Okay, vinegar and Listerine in a foot spa. Yes, that's Veronica says that. Um, all right. Can't keep up with these give ups. Okay. All righty. Sugar soap is the best, mate. Okay. Sugar soap is the best shower screen cleaner gets scum off so easy you know what gets soap scum off shower screens shower screens soap if it's soap scum as in hard soap scum use hard scope on the hard soap on the cloth to clean it if it's shower gel scum use shower gel on the cloth to clean it if it's shampoo use shampoo like against like with a cloth will wipe it off it will melt it and dissolve it and it just rinses off it's really really good dryer lint we don't have dryer so i can't tell you about that one sorry no dryer in our house but yes dry lint does work um uh, methylated spirits is handy you can use it for all sorts of things great for cleaning glass um Okay, now what else do I have? Oh, all right. Now I mentioned shower, um, shaving cream. This is foam. I whipped it out of the pantry. Toothpaste. 
toothpaste and toothbrushes. These were bulk buys, guys, that I bought two years ago. Bulk buys. And we're still going on them. They're really, really good. But those sorts of things that you will, um, that you might not think about off the top of your head, but it's good to have a backup or a couple of backups in the pantry. And remember, if you're buying now, you're buying at today's prices. So you're beating inflation because if you go to buy tomorrow or next week or next month, chances are it's going to go up in price. Now, we've seen in the comments earlier, things are going up at ridiculous rate. Um, Yes, foil and boiling water, a little bit of bicarb will clean your silver. Just be careful. Make sure it's um, um, real silver, not fake silver. Um, but it does work really, really well. Um, old toothbrushes for cleaning gaps around taps and in grout and all sorts of things are really, really good good cleaning the um, um around the lids the containers lid containers that sort of thing works really really well there you go trina she keeps a list of things to pick up each time she shops for stocking up perfect she's thinking ahead and that's what we need to do we need to um we need to think ahead we are planners, we are plotters, we are preparers. And so we think ahead. We don't wait until the event is here and then go, oh, I need to do this, this and this. We go, you know what, if such and such happened, I would need to have this, this and this. So maybe I'll get it now and then it's done, done and dusted, no need to worry about it anymore. We are preparers. So we think ahead. And that's what we're going to have to do. The world is, is really crazy at the moment. And it just seems to be getting crazier. So, uh, and I don't think the news can be trusted. I don't think the news can be trusted. It, it's just bizarre, the things that are being said. So we need to rely on ourselves. And we need to look after ourselves as best we can. So that means we need to think a little bit ahead, prepare a little bit ahead. I've always done that, preparing ahead. My mum used to say I was the only person she knew that was ready for tomorrow last week. I always have always done it. When our children were little, their clothes for the week were laid out. There, I had those... Um, hanging shelf things with seven things in it, seven days of clothes in there in each of their cupboards. Especially when they started kinder, they could go and get the clothes, get themselves um, dressed, didn't have to worry about it. They just knew it was there. Um, lunches were done. I would set the table for breakfast the night before. I've always done things ahead. So I like to prepare. I like to be prepared. I don't like unpleasant things. Um, surprises so <laughs> way to go Veronica she's got an app for a shopping list and then she has it with her and she's been adding as I speak oh, very good oh, I hope I've been able to jog you into thinking about things that you need that you might need, that you use but don't actually have on hand or you don't have a backup for them because that's what, that's what we need. That's all. This isn't a doom and gloom. What is it? Doomsday prepper show. This is our just using our common sense to know that we have a backup for what we use so that if all of a sudden it disappears, We've got time to find a replacement or an alternative or source it from somewhere else. 
without having to panic. I, I remember watching um, a young father on the news um, during the first lot of lockdowns and he was just about hysterical because he'd had to go into lockdown and they had a nine-week-old baby but they didn't have any nappies for the baby and they didn't have any formula for the baby and they didn't have any milk for themselves and um even without thinking about going into lockdown there should have at least been formula for the baby nappies and milk in the house they these people lived in the moment apparently and the moment caught up with them and at the moment they were in they had nothing i don't want to i don't want to live like that i don't want that to happen to me i don't want that to happen to any of you so just think ahead plan a little bit ahead you're not um stockpiling for 30 years that's not what we're doing. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about building our pantries to see us through however long, and it's a personal decision, however long you think you might need to rely on it. That's it. Um, uh, Trina, ground wheat for the first time on Sunday and made bread with half flour, half wheat, and it was delicious. Okay, very good. And that's a really good thing to do, sorry, um, for anyone that's thinking about doing that, um, getting their wheat and grinding it themselves and making their own breads and, and whatever with the flour, making their own flour to use, do it now. Start now and start small and slow because the wheat flour that you grind from the wheat is very different to the wheat flour that you buy that's been ground and refined and ground and refined and ground and refined and if you just go cold turkey onto your own home ground wheat you can end up with a really really sick tummy <laughs> you do not want to do that it's all again the doomsday prepper type shows all go you know well we've got 75 tons of wheat berries and we can survive for 50 years and blah, blah. and that's great but they've never tried it so when the end of the world happens and they have to rely on their 75 tons of wheat berries for the next 50 years for a little while they're going to be really really sick because their body cannot tolerate it so if you're thinking of doing that start now do it now start small and add it into your diet gradually and make a note of what doesn't upset you what does upset you because some grains you might think some types of wheat are fine but others aren't because you no know, oils ain't oils wheat ain't wheat so it's something to think about but i'm really glad that your um bread was delicious it's nothing quite like a homegrown bread jane's got her garden planned and she's got all the seeds i know she's got lots of seeds and seeds are something else that we can have if you're worried about um keeping them long term vacuum seal them and put them in the freezer they will be fine um, but generally seeds last a very long time again there's a date on the little envelope pay attention to it if you want to don't pay attention to I'm not going to say all I'm going to say is the dates are fairly new are fairly new um, to seed packets not something that has always been there and so yes we know that seeds have always have, have a life they have a life so they're not viable after a certain amount of time but it's a long time not a short time 
So know your seeds, learn about your seeds, know which ones need to be soaked before they can be planted and you should be fine. But seeds are something that, you know, are valuable and they will become like gold too. If there was ever um, a, you know, a complete financial meltdown, seeds and soap, seeds and soap, folks. We're going to do a whole show on seeds and soap. Um, all righty. Um, Delaney, when I can get out and about, I scar in NQR, SPC and similar places for bargains, don't have a regular shopping list for say, I have a list of things I need and want and keep my eyes with bargains. I have been um, getting the A10 tins of diced tomatoes from SPC. They're really $2.99, really, really cheap. And just re-bottling them, re-canning them into smaller um single recipe sizes um, you can freeze them if you don't have a canner if you don't want to can them that's a really good way of getting cheap diced tomatoes and that spc brand um, into your pantry occasionally they will have the baked beans really cheap too and you all you all know that we need baked beans in our house all righty so that was just um, as I was racing around panicking because I've lost my notes and wondering about what what I could talk about. Oh, one more thing. Things like this, tea towels. Um, tea towels, dishcloths, scrub buds, um, sheets, um, bath towels, bath mats. Those sorts of things um, are all handy to have a backup of too. They are all things that last a very long time with normal household use. So you don't need tons and tons of them, but at least a spare set would be good. We have, um, for our bed, we have three sets of sheets, one on the bed, one in the wash, and there's a spare set in the cupboard, and I just rotate through them. Um I've always done that um, simply because we've I've um, I didn't have a dryer for years and then when I did get a dryer I couldn't afford to use it so it became storage and we've always lived somewhere where winters have been cold and wet so drying sheets can be a bit of a pain if you don't have enough so that's all I've done. But those sorts of things are important to have backups of too. Just different things in your pantry. Um, if you knit, do you have um, plain yarn, plain coloured, neutral yarns that you can um, use? You don't need to keep a lot because it is expensive, but just some in case something happens and you can't get it anymore or it suddenly becomes super expensive and you find that you need to knit a jumper or sew some fabric. Most of us that do knit and sew have plenty of those things and on hand anyway. But, you know, there are very disciplined crafters, handicrafters who don't, who work on one project, get it finished, have no leftovers, then they start the next one. I'm not one of those. Okay. I have um, um, a list of simple substitutes that I will put the link to underneath, um, underneath here. I mentioned substitutes before. If you know that you need something, you know, and you can't get it, what can you, you know, is there a substitute? What can you use as a substitute, um, you know? For instance, if you need baking powder and you don't have it, if you have a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar and a half a teaspoon of bicarb soda, baking powder. If you need, um, oh, I don't know. Well, this is one that affects us all the time in Australia, is corn syrup, because we don't have corn syrup in Australia. 
So corn syrup, a good alternative is a cup of sugar and a quarter of a cup of water boiled into a syrup. That will be your corn syrup substitute for your recipes, for your American re and Canadian recipes. Um, you know, if you run out of corn flour, what can you use for thickening? Well, you can use plain flour, you can use arrowroot, things like that. So this um, um, list, I'll put the link underneath. You can just go over and download it if you want it. It's nothing else required of you. Just click on the link and you can get it. It's off our website, off our Cheapskates Club website. So, folks, there you go. It must be time to say goodnight. Oh, I've got the thing. Um, okay. Trina, it's good to learn new skills. I'm, I'm learning to... Um, oh... Congratulations, Delaney picked up an enameled cast iron casserole for baking bread. It will make the nicest bread. Oh, my goodness. The crust on that bread will be divine. <laughs> well, you know, when we lived in the country, we lived in cattle country, you would have thought meat was cheap. <laughs> Didn't work that way. <laughs> um I don't know. I have mm, I haven't bought any, so I don't know. But maybe someone will be able to help you. Um, um, oh, pressure canners have gone up. Oh, I know, I haven't checked. I noticed that there's very few. I've been keeping an eye out on marketplace for them, but they are not popping up. People are using them. Um, can openers, yes, can openers should be there. Veggie peelers. Jane says, rolls of chuck swipes are fabulous to have. We have them in the camper because they are really good for all sorts of things. Um, um, uh, yep, playing cards, jigsaw puzzles, all sorts of things. All right. Hello, Annabelle. How are you? All right. So that's um, that part um, of the show finish. So if you're not interested in anything else in my chatter, please, you know, I won't be offended if you say goodnight. I understand that. I mentioned earlier this year when I did the beginning of the year ones that we were having a handmade, totally handmade Christmas. And I was using, I will be using up what I have on hand. So I've got a few little things that I can show you if you're interested. I want to, hmm. yes, I've got a few little things I can show you. I'm just to keep bring, bring up today because I am working on those things. Um, we've also reopened our blog shop. Um, Hannah's working like crazy on some stuff and I put up some dishcloths yesterday because I've got a few of those ready to go but I have been doing little um, I'll show you this I, I don't know if you see this oh there you go little easels little easel signs I've been doing these um, and I'm still learning this, so be patient. These won't be gifts, I don't think, because they're not quite good enough. But um, Number One Sun buys um, First Press Coffee and it comes in, comes in these wonderful glass bottles. So I've 
painted them and I've been stenciling on them. So that one's a cute one. And this one I like. Oh, no. There we go. Get rid of the light. Um, I've also been working on. Where am I? Um, doing more face washes to make into sets, um, tea towels and things. Um, so I haven't been twiddling my thumbs. Um, they are, you know, um, what else have I got? Uh, oh, sorry, I'm disappearing on you, but I've, here it is. I've been working on these um, two. Oh, no, I can't hold it straight. Can't tell straight from crooked. There you go. Try and get it. So these, I've been working on these. These have been fun. Um, and this, oh, I've had so much fun with this. Um, so, because you all know I just love my meal plan. Oh, I can't. I, here we go. And on the back is the shopping list. So I've been busy in between doing, you know, other things. I have been working on our um, Christmas, um, handmade Christmas, handmade birthday, Easter coming up. So handmade Easter. Um, Hannah asked for. Fruity Bix instead of an Easter egg. That's okay. So I did add a box of Fruity Bix to the groceries last week. Um, oh, Veronica, cool. Is making um, crocheted scrunchies at school pickup. Yes. We did. I did a whole lot of them. I had a friend who has. Um, three little girls and I did a whole lot in school colours for her earlier this year as a as a thank you gift because she had helped me out with something else. So um, I don't have a cricket. I have a scan and cut that I do some some things on. Most of it's um, stencils done by hand. Um Um, Trish so I love the scan and cut though Hannah and I um, we've had it a couple of years we went halves it was on sale at Spotlight 2020 um, during the first initial huge long lockdown we were on and so we went halves in it and of course it lives at my house not her house um, and I love it I absolutely love it I use it for lots of things but I do, I've been um, practicing my stenciling. I used to stencil things all, oh, when the children were little, so 30 years ago, or well, maybe 28 years ago, <laughs> trying to figure out how old they are. And um, I used to do a lot of stenciling then. But of course, over the years and in the moves, I don't know what's happened to my stencils. And I did find some paints, but they were like rock solid. So I've had to start from scratch. So I'm still figuring out the stenciling again but it's fun so I am working on our handmade Christmas and it will be handmade Christmas and I am using what I have I'm trying not to buy anything because that defeats the purpose and of course will add to our budget woes won't it so that's what I've been up to in my spare time, which is usually you know, between two and four in the morning when I can't sleep and I get up and I sit and knit or work on a project somewhere or other. All right. Um, cheap Easter chocolate. <laughs> cheap, easier chocolate. It's easy to get into your car. Um, at Aldi, the Aldi chocolate, the, they used to be 69 cent rabbits. I think they've gone up. I haven't looked at the price of them. I used to wait till after Easter 
and get them for 29 cents and I would buy as many as I could because it was brilliant chocolate for baking, absolutely brilliant for baking. Um, the caramel slice, you know, the caramel slice with the base, my caramel slice, not the Women's Weekly one, the one I make with the um, base and then the cherries and the almonds and the and the chocolate on top, caramel and then the chocolate on top and bake it. Brilliant for that, absolutely brilliant for that. Um, Oh, my dishcloths. Yes. Um, sure. Here we go. All right. The pattern for these is over on the Cheapskates Club website. Um, there you go. Now, I knit them on the diagonal. Um, so I knit them like that. Start like that. And, yeah, and then do increase and then decrease. Just because I like the pattern. Um, and I'm fussy about the yarn I use for them. So I, it's 100% cotton and it's the Burnett Handicraft yarn. So there's a pretty green one. And this one actually has a dish scrubber to go with it, but I don't know where that is. And there's a pretty blue one. And there's a pretty pink one. So... These, these are exactly the same as I use in my kitchen. I've used them for years and years and years in my kitchen. It's just, oh, I don't know how long I've been knitting dishcloths. A very long time I've been using them. But what I usually do for my kitchen is between Christmas and New Year over the summer when it's a bit, you know, things slow down a bit, I usually knit seven new ones. <laughs> so I like it. I, hmm. I use a new dishcloth every day. So seven new ones, so seven different colours go into the kitchen and then the old ones get moved into the laundry. I know I'm a bit, um, a bit OCD, aren't I? I'm sorry. I didn't realise it until I started talking tonight. I was buying things here and doing this and shopping T-shirts for this. And, oh, dear. Um, oh, Oh, and it was, that cotton was so nice to knit with, Delaney. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it, yeah. I thought it was really pretty with just the little bits of colour in it. It was very, very nice. Okay, good. Oh, oh, no. Mm. Um, yes, let's hope for after Easter, um, markdowns although i've our aldi our local aldi that way um has been very very light on just about everything for hmm, months months and months and months um hit and miss for produce hit and miss for meat and chicken dairy um but the only thing you can be sure of getting is milk even cream, sour cream, yogurts, all been a bit hit and miss. Um, they haven't had butter for two weeks. Um, um, uh, all sorts of things have been missing. Um, tuna. Oh, we go through, well, I like tuna. We go through a lot of tuna. So... Lots of things have been missing. And the special buys, if you go into the store and it's, you know, sorry, you know, shipping delay, shipping delay, shipping delay. I have noticed that a lot of their special buys are now only available online. You have to go to all, um, order them online and get them, which was um, something new. Um, D, yeah, Aldi's, I think, suffering. Um, Jane crochets her dishcloths. On the diagonal on Bendigo cottons, oh, guys. Oh, I can't buy any because I'm not buying any new things this year. But oh my goodness, the new colours in the Bendigo cotton. Oh, I got the little sample thing um, came in the mail on. Must have been Friday. What day is today? It must have been Friday. Oh my goodness, the colours are just stunning. So, hmm, 
I might have to put in a request for some yarn for Mother's Day. So really, really pretty colours. Bendigo um, Woolen Mills have beautiful cottons. They're um, crochet cottons. Um, four, eight and ten ply. Absolutely stunning colours that they come in. Just beautiful. Um, now I saw Julie. Um, that particular one that I showed you, this big one, um, I didn't make. I bought this and we've used it as a template for the others. Um, I did buy this one, this board, because I can say to, I can say to um, any either Wayne or the boys, I need an easel. I want it to look like this and this and this. And they just look at me because my vision doesn't, I don't know why I can't ESP it into their head. It just doesn't work. So I found that that one we had stashed away for something. Um, just came from a $2 shop and we had it stashed away. Maybe I was using, I had planned to use it in a workshop or something. And so it was out in the shed. So we brought it in and I, oh, perfect. I had to um, design the menu to fit and I'm, I'm not really good with that sort of, so I was a bit nervous, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So the boys, and I have blackboard paint in my cupboard, so I don't have to buy blackboard paint. And Wayne has timber out, so we don't have to buy that. So, yeah, it'll be good. Oh. Oh, 10 rolls of cotton for $4 is a bargain. Wendy got the cotton sample card too. So pretty. Jane, those colours, those colour swatches are just, oh, my gosh. Yeah, absolutely stunning. Some of the colours were so pretty. And the new walls were gorgeous too. Um, I'm still trying to, there, there was a lot about this on the, um, interwebs yesterday, you know, Aldi was hiking prices up 50% overnight and people were going to starve and fall down dead in the streets and all sorts of things. It was really actually hard, really, really hard to verify what was true and what was exaggerated. I'm still, anyway, but we are actually protected here in Australia with that sort of price increase. They might have to put their prices up, and I understand that. A lot of their special buys and things are imported, but their fresh produce, um, a lot of their um, tinned or packet goods, their dairy, that's all Australian. Their meat is all Australian. So those price increases should not hit us here like that. And we are protected. ACCC will protect us against such huge, for no apparent reason, out of the blue overnight price increases. That's not to say the prices aren't going up because they are, and I have noticed that, but we do have that protection that other countries don't have. Um, so, yes, if you shop at Aldi, it makes sense to buy at today's prices because you know it's going to be more expensive tomorrow or next week or next month. That just makes sense. If you have the cash to be able to do that, then do it. If you have to put it on credit, don't do it because you will end up paying more, more than the inflated price. Don't do it. If you have the cash to be able to do that, to stock up, then go right ahead and do it if that is what you want to do. I'm not telling anyone to do anything. I'm suggesting, I would suggest strongly that if you have the cash and you are able to stock up on at least some of your basics, then that just makes sense. But it is entirely up to you. 
um, yeah, prices, Jane, are going up absolutely everywhere. All right. And um, I would be more concerned for countries like Finland, Poland, um, Estonia, Denmark, those countries that surround Ukraine and Russia, they're the countries that are going to be um, um, well, especially the Poland, um, Estonia, uh, Finland. Oh, we always thought it was quite a strong economy. It's not as strong as we thought it was going to be. Those economies can really suffer. The German economy was not, not so bad considering the worldwide craziness so anyway it is now nearly nine o'clock and i have to go i've kept you talking too long i'll put the link for the substitutes um in the comment box below me if you enjoyed tonight's show please give me a thumbs up that would really be great if you haven't already subscribed to our channel please do and that will automatically put you in the running to win um the dehydrator that I have sitting over there that I forgot to talk about because as soon as we hit 5,000 subscribers that baby is out of here it's on its way to a new home all righty thank you again for joining me I shall see you next Tuesday at 7 30 p.m have a great week everyone and remember keep calm and cheapskate